Today's story is the wise young girl becomes head of the household, a Chinese folk tale. Once in China, long, long ago, there lived a father, his four sons, and three daughters-in-law. His three older sons had married within a few months of each other, and all to young women from the same village. Recently, these three new daughters-in-law had been brought into the house. Their new father-in-law's wife had died a few years before, and having no mother-in-law with them in their new home and being lonesome and homesick for their former families, they constantly asked the old man for permission to visit their former village. For you see, those were the days when young women, after they married and moved into the homes of their new husbands, needed permission to leave the household. Annoyed by the continual pleas of his three new daughters-in-law, the old father thought of a way to put an end to it. He gave the young women permission in this way, saying, You are always begging me to allow you to go and visit your mothers, and you think I am very hard-hearted for not letting you go. Now, you may go, but only upon this condition. When you come back, you must each bring me something that I want. One of you must bring me some fire wrapped in paper. The other must bring me some wind wrapped in paper. And the third must bring me some music in the wind. Unless you promise to bring me this, you are never to ask me to let you go home. And if you go and fail to get these for me, you are never to come back. The old man did not suppose that these conditions would be accepted. Of course... They were hard to understand, much less to fulfill. But the girls were young and thoughtless, and in their anxiety to get away, did not consider any of that. So they quickly promised, and made ready with speed. In great glee, they started off on foot to visit their mothers. After they had walked a long distance, chatting about what they should do and whom they should see in their village a heel of one of their shoes came loose and fell off. They all stopped to fix the shoe, and in that pause, they remembered what they had promised their father-in-law. At once, they all began to despair, as they had no idea what the strange requests really were, much less how to fulfill them. While they sat, wailing by the roadside, a young woman came riding along on a water buffalo. She stopped and asked them what was the matter and if she could help. They told her she could do them no good. No one could. But she persisted in offering her sympathy and inviting their confidence. Till at last, they told her their story. The young woman on the water buffalo said that if they would go home with her, she would show them a way out of their trouble. Their case seemed so hopeless and the girl on the water buffalo seemed so sure of her own power to help that they followed the rider of the water buffalo back to her home. And there, she showed them how to comply with their father-in-law's demands. Now let's see if you have any ideas. How can the first daughter-in-law bring back fire wrapped in paper? How can the second daughter-in-law bring back wind in a paper? How can the third daughter-in-law bring back music in wind? Well, for the first one, she showed them a paper lantern. When lighted, there's a fire inside and its paper surface encompasses the blaze. So it's truly some fire wrapped in paper. For the second, she showed them a paper fan. When flapped, wind surrounds the fan and thus satisfies the call for wind in paper. For the third, she showed them a set of chimes that creates music in the wind. 
the three young women thanked the wise girl for her good ideas and went on their way rejoicing. After a pleasant visit to their home village, they took a paper lantern, a paper fan, and a set of chimes and returned to their father-in-law's house. As soon as he saw them approach, he began to vent his anger at their light regard for his commands. But they assured him that they had perfectly obeyed him and showed him what they had brought to fulfill the conditions. Much astonished, the father asked how it was they had suddenly become so clever, and they told him the story of their journey and of the girl on the water buffalo that had so fortunately come to their relief. He asked if the girl was married, and finding that she was not, he engaged a go-between to see if he could arrange for the girl on the water buffalo to marry his youngest son, the fourth. For you see, these were also the days when marriages were often arranged in just that kind of way. Having succeeded in arranging a marriage between his fourth son and the girl on the water buffalo, she arrived at the house. The father told the rest of the family that as there was no mother in the house, and as this girl had shown herself to be possessed of extraordinary wisdom, that she should be the head of the household. Some happy and prosperous years passed. The young wives bore many children, and all fared very well in the household together. I think of stories like this as riddle stories. There's a problem that the characters need to solve, and they solve it through their own cleverness. Not through magic or special wishes from fairies, but simply by being smart and having good problem-solving skills. And in this case, it's the girl on the water buffalo that they met along the way who is able to solve all three riddles for them. When I was little, I used to think that riddles were like jokes. But now I know better. There's something special about riddles. A riddle is some little clever problem that you can figure out if you think about it long enough, maybe thinking a little bit outside the box, as they say, looking for unusual answers to the question that's being asked. For example, with the first riddle in this book, the father asks for fire wrapped in paper. Well, since everyone knows that paper burns very easily when it's close to fire, it sounds impossible at first. But in a paper lantern, the paper is actually far enough away from the flame that it doesn't catch on fire, as long as you're careful. Here's another riddle for you. What has hands and a face but can't hold anything or smile? Okay, I'm about to tell you the answer. It's a clock. The part of the clock where you can see the numbers and the time written is called a face. And the hands are the long things that point to the numbers to tell you what time it is. Did you get it? Here's another one. What two things can you never eat for breakfast? I'm about to tell you the answer. Lunch and dinner. Did you guess that one, too? Do you have any riddles that you love to tell? <laughs> 